Hi, I'm Amanda Call, and today we're going to be doing something I haven't done in quite a while. We're going to be playing around with a little bit of printmaking. So I probably haven't done any printmaking since, like, um, middle school, maybe? <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was, but it was, it was a while. It was quite some time ago. Wait, no, I did, like, one small printmaking piece with like a very weird technique recently for myself, but it's just not something that I normally do. I know a lot of other artists who do a fair amount of printmaking, and I always think that it looks really cool. I think it's a really fun technique. One of the things that I think is really cool about the idea of printmaking is that usually when you talk about a print, you're talking about a copy of something. So like you draw or paint an image, and then you take a photograph of it and you print photographs of it, you know, with like a big printing machine or with like just a regular home printer or whatever. And that, that copy of the image is what you call a print. But when you're talking about printmaking, the print is a copy in that it, you can make lots of them from the same plate or block, but there's not really an original. There's an original design that the block is made from, but the block isn't the original, it's the block. It's the thing that makes the prints. So it's kind of neat in the way that it occupies this weird in-between space of like, what is a copy? What is an original? I don't know, I just think that's kind of cool as I dive down my what is art, art school nerd rabbit hole. <laughs> Block printing and screen printing are both techniques that are used very frequently for the covers of mini comics. So I'm going to be trying to do some block printing for the first time in forever. It's a good idea if you're revisiting an old technique for the first time in a long time or for the first time ever to not immediately jump into your big final project with that new technique, but to instead do like a little sample project or a study with that technique first to make sure that you understand what you're doing and kind of work out any areas where you may not really get what's going on yet. And to that end, I'm going to do just a little block printing piece today. I have all of the different block printing stuff, like scattered to the four winds in my various bins of unorganized art supplies, and I couldn't find all the pieces, so we're gonna, we're gonna go with something a little bit easier, and I got a kit. <laughs> I love that people make these. <laughs> so this contains all of the things that I need already in it, so we can open that up and see what's inside. I got this kit online, it was like $23 or something, very reasonable. In here we have, oh, instructions. That's good, I will probably need those. I basically know how this technique works, but like I said, it's been a long time, so these will be good to refresh my memory. All right, we have the actual block that we are going to use to produce our image and to print it onto paper. Um, this is what Speedball calls their Speedy Carve block, so it's a little bit softer. It's got a really soft, gummy kind of texture to it, so it should be a little bit easier to carve than like a linoleum block, which is actually pretty stiff and pretty dense, so it takes a lot of effort to carve. We've also got some black block printing ink, just a little tube of it, and this is the handle for the various carving bits, which they must be inside. They must be inside. They and then we also have our brayer. This is the thing that you use to spread the ink all over the block, which again, we will get to that step later. First of all, we need uh, an image. We need to figure out what it is that we're going to actually be making a print of. So we're gonna jump over to the drawing board. For this project, I decided to go with a simple design that made strong use of black, so I figured, well, a raven's black, so that should work. I found a good reference shot and sketched out the basic idea, then marked out an area the same size as my print block to draw the design as I would like it to appear when printed.
I uh, had to redo the feet a couple of times because I kept making them too huge. <laughs> I gave him a little Ansu's rune here as well. Ansu's is the rune of enlightenment and knowledge, which seemed appropriate for one of Odin's little buddies. Hello, a quick announcement here. Uh, since we are doing human today, I felt the need to throw in a little bit of a disclaimer here. If you've watched any of my videos, including this one, you've no doubt seen the Kanaz rune on my hand. Um, if you follow me on social media, you've probably seen that I have a cat named Odin. I have other runic tattoos on my body. I sometimes wear a Mjolnir pendant. And all of this might lead you to make some completely understandable, but completely incorrect assumptions about me. Uh, so I just wanted to clear things up and put this out here right away, is that myself as a person and my channel and any of my other ventures in no way support white supremacy, neo-Nazism, racism, homophobia, transphobia, misogyny, or basically um, any other kind of hateful bull you can think of. None of this stuff is okay. None of it is anything endorsed. I am, I am absolutely antithetical to these ideas. And if you have been watching me or supporting me financially because you mistakenly believed that these were things that I stood for, then I just wanted to let you know, I do not want your money. I do not want your views. I do not want you in my audience. I would like you to log off, go think about your life and yourself and what's so sad and broken in you as a human being that you feel the need to hate other people and denigrate other people to feel better about yourself. And failing that, I'd like you to go yeet yourself into the abyss. So. Cool, now that we've got that covered, uh, back to the art. Okay, so now we have to transfer our drawing onto the printing block to be carved. One important thing to remember is that we have a rune, which is a letter in our design. If we transfer the image just as it is onto the block, it will print backwards. To prevent this, I scanned the image, flipped it, and then printed it out. To transfer the image to the block, I just colored the whole back of the printout in soft graphite, a 4B pencil to be exact. Once I was sure I had the whole back covered, I cut the design out of the larger piece of paper and lined it up on my printing block. After securing it in place with some tape, I traced over the lines of the image using a fair amount of pressure to be sure the graphite would transfer the marks. I used a blue pencil here as well so I could see where I had or hadn't traced more clearly. So now we have our image on our block and we're ready to start carving. So take one of these little guys out of here. They fit into a little like slot in the end of the thing. I don't know how well you can see that, but got to loosen up the handle, stick it in, and then tighten it. I'm going to just leave my other little tips over here and put the bottom back on that so that I can switch out between them easier. I'm starting with a really thin, tiny one so that I can outline some of this. All right, so the thing about block printing that's kind of unique is that you are trying to leave the area that's going to get ink on it. And you're removing the areas that you don't want ink on. So you're removing the white and leaving the black. And that's what's kind of unique about it and changes the way that you have to think about it as you're doing it. And yeah, this pink block is like really soft and the tool is just like cutting right into it with very very little resistance so I actually have to be very careful to keep a light touch and not accidentally like go way farther and dig out way more cut out way more than I intend to
All right, so I'm trying to think about like, where do I want white to appear on this? Like, where are the highlights on this raven? As opposed to like, where are the black parts of it, the darker parts of it? And that's actually really tricky to like, make your brain think backwards like that. If it's not something that you're used to doing. So I think what I'm having the hardest time with while I'm trying to do this, it's like, what? No, I'm supposed to be making marks. Like you're used to making marks with like a pen or a brush. And it's like, no, I need to be making the opposite of the marks. Like my, my marks are actually the white and I need to leave behind the black. Especially because it doesn't appear that way. Like it's not the same as drawing on black paper with like a white pencil or something where you can see that that's what you're doing. You can't actually see the end result while you're doing this. You just have a, an entirely pink block with some low areas and high areas. And so it's like trying to reprogram your brain to think of the low areas as whites and the high areas as darks. Sometimes when I'm going to cut this, it's like the little flap doesn't want to come off. <laughs> I think that might be the disadvantage of this very soft rubbery block is that it's actually a little bit too pliable. And so sometimes your cut doesn't go all the way through and it just kind of hangs on there at the end and you gotta pull it off or go around the other side to get it to come off. I'm going to have so many of these little pink worms all over my desk. <laughs> to go too too deep I think I need to remember to keep it a little bit more shallow because I'm going in at too deep of an angle and then I just end up with a mess because it's like it's only these things are only sharp at the very tip so if you go at too deep of an angle or if you try to jam them down in too far then they just they, they don't they don't work <laughs> not made to work that way I should have probably flipped my reference image too that would have made my life a lot easier because now I'm also trying to like flip my reference image around in my brain a lot for my poor little brain to be doing. I think I need to switch to a different tip to just get rid of some of this stuff down around the rocks just because I'm gonna get confused but this is not this tiny little thin liner tip is not good for uh, emptying out large areas of the block. Count wide and shallow. Oh, that's working much better. Okay, at this point, I think I've outlined everything, and so now I'm going to switch over to the one of the broader carving tips and finish removing all of like all of this big area around the outside here that I want to be white. I think I've gotten all the little nooks and crannies so I'm almost done. Almost done getting out the background. Okay I'm not gonna lie it's like ridiculously satisfying to do these big open stretches. I'll be right back. I've returned with a band-aid. Um, as a very clumsy person, I will recommend uh, the knuckle and fingertip bandage pack. It's 
invaluable. A regular band-aid would not cover this injury very well. Mm. Yeah, watch out for that. Don't put your hand on the other side of where the very sharp thing that you're putting a lot of force behind is going. I was so close to being done, too. Okay, just try to get through this last little bit without injuring myself any further. done. I think I have it fully carved at this point. Everything that I want to be white on the paper has been carved away and everything that to a lower level and everything that I want to be black is now higher up where it will actually receive the ink on the next step. So I think now it's time to start printing but I might need a little more space than this. The instructions that came with this were not super helpful um, but thankfully I've done this before and seen other people do this so I more or less know what I'm doing. Uh, I don't have a regular kind of um, palette or anything to spread my ink out on so I'm going to just be using this piece of parchment paper to get the ink onto and uh, then roll the brayer around in it so I'm gonna open up. Let's get let's get into this. We open up the ink. I'm gonna put a little blob of it here not too much. I'm going to kind of Oh my, this is not necessarily working as well as I might like. So then, get a little excess off. So now we go over to the block and we're going to get this on the block. Coat it nice and evenly all over. So now that my block is evenly coated, I'm going to I have a piece of um, this Legion bamboo paper that I got from Art Snacks a while ago that is supposed to be really good for prints. So now we're going to, while this is still wet, I'm going to stop talking and get it centered here. Should have actually done it this way to begin with, but kind of rub, 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 rub. And moment of truth. Oh, oh, that wasn't too bad. I need to make sure that I rub a little bit more down in this corner here. Let's try one more. Set my paper down nice and even. Rub, 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 rub. Can you hear my stupid game birds outside? Shush, I'm trying to do a very important YouTube here. And... <gasps> ah! Look at that! Oh my gosh! That actually came out pretty good! So uh, once more, with a clearer video angle for what I'm doing, make sure your brayer, that's the roller thingy, has a thin, even coating of ink on it. Then roll the brayer all over the raised surfaces of your print block. You want even coverage, but no big, thick blobs of ink. Lay your paper straight down onto the block, and then use a little bit of pressure to rub it all over to make sure the ink transfers. Then lift the paper as straight up off the block as you can and set it aside to let the ink dry, which should only take a couple of minutes. Oh yeah, and uh, don't forget to wash the ink off your block and brayer when you're done. They might stain a little, but you don't want gunky dried on ink stuck on there. I had a great time making these prints and will certainly revisit this technique in the future. If this video inspired you to try your hand at printmaking, let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for joining me on this adventure. I hope you like this video and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. No, they wouldn't come out that way. They would come out the bottom. Oh. Ah!
just dropped them all over my floor. I was 